subscribe to bizbo and press the bell icon see boring news turn into enjoyable stories it was not the 36 all out against australia that led to kohli's fall it was that he chose to give his personal life preference over that of team india by leaving them at this crucial juncture this was the same virat kohli who had once said after giving up sugar don't you miss having sweets I do but there will be enough time to do that after my playing days now i must give 110% to indian cricket that passion seemed missing and he reportedly admitted as much to ganguly after the loss in the third test at cape town i'm not waking up fresh and happy it's time india gets a new captain then publicly announcing soon thereafter everything has to come to a halt at some stage and for me as test captain of india it is now Between 36 all out to his resignation Kohli had an eminently forgettable unlucky 13 months Belly 8 weeks before 36 all out the term of the Supreme Court appointed committee of administrators under Vinod Rai was dismantled under whom the captain and his manager Ravi Shastri were given unbridled authority to take all team decisions Ganguly as BCCI chief was not so accommodating Ball please Hmm and look to clip kohli's wings especially after certain incidents led to undermining his authority it all came to a head when kohli ignored ganguly's advice when the latter decided to resign as t20 captain okay but announce it after the world cup but kohli claiming fatigue from constant cricket still went ahead and announced it before the tournament began i will resign as captain after the world cup It didn't do any good for the team's morale as they got thrashed by Pakistan by 10 wickets and then New Zealand by 8 to get knocked out of the championships. The loss was bad enough, but what rankled Ganguly more was Kohli's assumption that he would continue as ODI captain, something normally in the selector's domain. I will continue to lead the team in ODIs and tests. Kohli then repeated the same mistake, quitting IPL captaincy before the first game even began. This time his team recovered from disastrous early games including a 92 all out to miss out on the top 2 playoffs because of an inferior run rate. Before that in England too they were in discretions disregarding Jay Shah's letter specifically asking the team to be cautious and refrain from attending crowded events both Kohli and Shastri went for a book launch event without taking prior approval. The duo ended up with covid and passed it on to many others. and the india england series had to be discontinued leaving the result in limbo who knows what backdoor efforts ganguly must have had with the ecb to not have india forgo the match that would have leveled the series 2-2 hey wait wait, wait. shastri whose term was scheduled to end on november 14th children's day was let go unceremoniously and kohli was taught a lesson for his indiscretion ouch ouch it was clear to ganguly that kohli needed to be reined in and someone trusted and with stature was needed for the job vvs lakshman was an option but he didn't have the required coaching experience anil kumble was another but kohli had not seen eye to eye with him when he was coach and not only had him removed but had shastri brought back this left only one solitary person who fit the bill rahul dravid and ganguly went all out to woo him He even joked about it later why he offered him the top job Samit Rahul Dravid's son called saying that his father was being too strict with him and that he needed to be taken away To be fair Dravid had worked with many players on the team since they were juniors and knew them very well Once Dravid confirmed appointing him was a mere formality only 10 days notice was given to others to prepare and apply for the position Kohli wasn't even consulted I have no idea what is happening on the coach front. We have not had any discussions. Kohli was then taken down another notch when just 90 minutes before the team for South Africa was announced, the board informed him. And uh, by the way, we don't want two separate captains for white ball cricket. That's too much leadership. You lead in tests, Rohit will lead in the other formats. Kohli sacking as white ball captain dashed his hopes of winning an ICC trophy as he was expecting to lead the team in the 2023 ICC men's ODI World Cup to be held in India. The logic of splitting white and red ball captaincy was sound, but Ganguly had no business to speak on behalf of the selection committee. The chairman of the selection committee Chetan Sharma should have spoken. 
with white ball captaincy taken away kohli's own poor form laid the grounds for the loss of captaincy in tests with his own batting average as bad as pujara and rane he could not justify dropping them without also dropping himself almost against the run of play india won the first test in south africa but then crashed and burned in the next two to lose the series 2-1 it seems kohli was spent his heart was not in it His state of mind can even be reflected in his mediocre batting performance. 250s in the 161 runs over four innings. Reportedly, he took a back seat during team meetings and left most decisions to Dravid. Gone was his eternal support Shastri, who was as tongue in cheek as his protege. Yeh time Smith aur Warner the, par phir bhi haar gaye. There was no one he could turn to for support. His words were honest when he quit test captaincy. I have always believed in giving my 120% in everything I do and if I can't do that I cannot be dishonest to my team. In his departing statement he never even thanked Ganguly or Dravid. To Ravi bhai and the support group and lastly a big thank you to MS Dhoni who believed in me as a captain. Ganguly's plan to rein in Kohli went awry by his quitting leaving no obvious choice as skipper. Rohit Sharma At 34 he can at best be a stopgap captain. KL Rahul seemed totally at sea as ODI captain. Gautam Gambhir was at least charitable. Rahul as a leader is a work in progress. But Gavaskar didn't mince his words. Rahul has looked clueless. Rishabh Pant should be made captain. A similar move in 2007 saw an unknown long-haired swashbuckling wicketkeeper become a hugely successful captain. Rishabh Pant is the same but less hair and of course a lefty. But it is surprising that it was Ganguly who himself once twirled his shirt from the hallowed balcony at Lords completely bare-chested after India won a thriller. That took offense to Virat's aggressiveness which he undoubtedly took to another level. Probably too far at times bullying umpires and sometimes even disrespectful of opponents. Focus on your country not just the opposition. A lot of it probably has to do with ego. Both Ganguly and Kohli had different versions of what happened after Kohli renounced T20 captaincy. They accepted my resignation and never told me to reconsider. We asked him to reconsider and remain captain. Unfortunately, all this happened publicly, infuriating Ganguly, who sent out Rohit Sharma to refute Kohli's version of events. Everyone present at the meeting including me asked Virat to reconsider that Sharma was sent in someone who is not particularly friendly with Kohli and in some ways a rival hit him hard it seems BCCI has abandoned me now Kapil Dev who himself had run ins with BCCI bosses during his playing days opines talking badly about each other in public is not a good thing whether it is Saurabh or Kohli Nine people were there at the meeting. Five selectors headed by Chetan Sharma, Jay Shah, Ganguly, Kohli and Rohit. Whoever was right is immaterial. Indian cricket was the loser. They both had differing versions once again when Kohli was removed as ODI skipper. There was no communication with the board between my quitting T20 captaincy on September 16th and the day I was removed as ODI captain on December 8th. We had taken Kohli into confidence before making the change. Then yet another controversy erupted about Kohli wanting to opt out of the ODI series against South Africa. Kohli had made the request for a break long before Sharma was announced as ODI captain. I was and I am available for selection all the time. I never asked BCCI for rest. All this gives rise to unnecessary speculation. Virat is not there for ODI. Rohit is not there for tests. There is no harm in taking a break, but the timing needs to be better. This just substantiates speculation about the rift. Despite what happened in the last 13 months, Kohli has left some lasting benefits for Team India. He changed fitness standards, irrespective if you were a batsman, spinner or a fast bowler because you had to be the best version of yourself. He picked five bowlers consistently, irrespective of the conditions or the opposition because winning test matches is all about picking up 20 wickets. and in still the belief that india can win abroad when virat took over as test captain winning a single test overseas was an achievement now if india loses an overseas test series it is an upset that is how far he has taken indian cricket forward 
There have been murmurs of a show cause notice against Kohli, presumably for his comments regarding the lack of communication. The board would deal with it appropriately. Indian cricket administrators have long excelled in creating a problem where none exist. Deliberate opaque communication, sources leaking rumors, senior players kept guessing, one team member being played off against another. What would be really sad is if politicking eventually leads to Kohli quitting the game itself. There is no reason to believe that will happen, but Kohli is an all or nothing player. So was Kohli an aggrieved captain who had been unjustly treated or a petulant and bad loser who's throwing a tantrum? Please like and share the story and write in your comments. This was Limerick. There was a captain called Virat Kohli who left his team when they needed him only. But then the boys stood up and won the cup. Ever since then, the cap's been lonely. You will also find these sources listed in the video description section. Do subscribe if you haven't already and please comment, like and share. We have over 350 videos on our channels on various news topics.